I'm excited for uh, what we're going to be doing in the coming weeks here on my world. But before we put a button on today's show, I wanted to recognize a comment that uh, Tony Flowers oh. actually posted in our uh, our live group chat here. We've got a live studio audience. Okay. All you guys hanging out with us from adfreeshows.com. But Tony says, if anyone here is considering signing up as a top guy, do it. The fantasy camp was my wife and I's favorite weekend we've ever had. He would continue, not only is it the best value in entertainment, but I feel like I'm getting over on AFS with what I get for the money. It's the best gift I got was my wife gifting me a year of top guy for Xmas a few years ago. He says, I fully believe in it. It's just been such an amazing experience. The friends we've made, the experiences. I'll tell anyone who will listen. So if you've been on the fence about perhaps joining us for Top Guy Weekend in Huntsville and Fantasy Camp next year, take a look at adfreeshows.com. I think you'll be glad you did. Hey, I want to hit two more things before we get out of here, Jeff. I know we've kind of been all over the place, but uh, over the weekend, the UFC ran the first ever sports event that I know of at the sphere in Las Vegas. Now we had seen, you know, you two and some other performances happen there, but this is the first time we got like a sporting event. And when we saw it, all I could think was, man, I can't wait until we see something from WWE or AEW there. I'd love to see professional wrestling in that building. I mean, what a view this is. If you're watching with us on YouTube, I want to be clear. That's not the building on the right-hand side. That's all a, a video board. And it's like 8K. It's gigantic. And that little dot in the middle right there, that's the actual octagon. So the visuals that you could do in this are out of this world. But supposedly, so is the rent. Yeah. If you had to guess, Jeff, do you think it's likely that we see a wrestling event in the sphere in the next year or so? I, I, you, 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 that, the, that last couple of words you threw on there next year or so, um, like uh, over the weekend I, I discovered, and my dad doesn't listen, so I can share here. My dad's birthday is in December. So it always sucks as a December baby. You know, you're going to get a birthday present right by Christmas. It's kind of weird, but they're doing an Eagles residency there. He loves the Eagles. So I think my Christmas slash birthday present is going to be. I'm going to knock out the airfare in the hotel and get mom and dad some tickets. And as I laid that out to Megan, she said, well, I want to go. Yeah. And she's not normally saying I can't wait to go to Vegas or I can't wait to see the Eagles, but the sphere makes it an attraction all on its own and no disrespect to AEW. Everybody listening to this knows I'm a fan, but I felt like the first year they ran Wembley on some level, Wembley was a part of the attraction. Wembley was a part of the draw. Yes. I want to see wrestling, but I want to see it in this building. My wife is interested in flying across the country to go to a concert for a band that she likes, but she doesn't love. It's because of the sphere, you. but because of that, they can charge premium prices. Like, as I took a look, I think the most affordable tickets that I saw were like a thousand dollars for the Eagles a piece, a piece each. So for, you know, when she says, Oh, I want to go, I'm like, well, no problem. That's just another six yeah. grand. Okay. Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but either way though, I would love to see wrestling there. Do you think it's going to have to become more affordable before TKO or, or AEW pull the trigger? I heard the number was 20 million. And look, um, there are the Wembley Stadium you, you mentioned. Uh, next week, Arthur Ashe built for tennis. The uh, sight lines, if you will, wrestling next Wednesday is such a cool atmosphere, but it ain't cheap. And, and so when I put on my promoter cap, and really look at the ROI on what do you have to charge? And I know you're not going to get it back on the live event. It's just, I would say impossible. So what, it, what, it, what, why is it, is it a vanity deal? Is it like, what, what are we doing here? You know, that thing we were texting about Conrad, the virtual, um, reality how to watch a ball game. And there's only two of them right now, but you can go in and watch a game and you watch from, you know, the arena seats or the end zone and this and that, you know, I think that's obviously coming, but Conrad to run a show in the sphere. I, I just, I, I don't see it happening. I'll say in the next 12 months. Um, I, I just, I just don't, uh, I may be wrong, but you, you've really got to gross a boatload of revenue 
just to get to sea level. Um, now, to so, be clear, Jeff, I don't think it's a $20 million rental. I think it's all the other added expense of, and I know we're getting way in the weeds here, but I've ran a couple of national television commercials. And in order to do that, they have to be shot in a certain format. They have to be sized a certain way. Like there's very specific technical deliverables that have to be there. The specs have to be right on for it to air on broadcast television. Well, normally I, I know I'm way dumbing this down. We used to watch TV in four, three. Now we watch it in 16, nine. So you don't have those boxes on the side. Our TVs are rectangles now instead of squares. So all of our content is created in that shape. Now you're going to have to create all new graphics and all new images yes. that are just all around you and sort of immersive. And what got me so excited about this, and you and I have been talking about it for a few weeks, is this new sports bar, Cosm in Dallas, where it looks like, and, and they've set up a camera for different sporting events, so it looks and feels like you're at that venue, you're at that arena, but you're not. You're just like in a sports bar where – there's food and bars and restaurants, but you're not at a stadium with 90,000 other people, but boy, it feels like it. And going back about 15 years ago, I remember they did a national championship game in the movie theaters where you could wear like 3d glasses. So you could see the national championship game. Florida was beaten up on somebody. Uh, and, and, and I thought, Hey, this is cool. It didn't last. I think this will last. And I wonder if the sphere is sort of, the first iteration we're seeing like that, because I personally, as a wrestling fan, I would love if that Cosm thing in Dallas, if that sports bar, if that, if we could watch WrestleMania there and I don't have to mess with the stadium, if I could have seen the Wembley show for AEW there, yeah. if I could see the Tokyo dome show from there where it feels like I'm there, I'm surrounded by people. We're all cheering, but we don't have to deal with traveling all the way to Japan. Like that gets me really excited about what's possible. And, and I hope that somebody makes the investment to make that sort of experience happen because I would much rather watch a WrestleMania surrounded by people in a stadium like event. That's not actually a stadium. I was going to say, man, uh, society, <laughs> we are dumbing it down and making it simple, but it's all the, not just user experience, the consumer experience. So it'll be interesting, Connie. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I read a couple of different follows over the weekend about what that UFC event uh, cost. And so that whew, lot of revenue has got to be generated to, for that to make sense. But it does make me wonder once you have, I mean, cause as you know, just look at like, man, 25 years ago, the idea that you had a TV hanging on your wall, it was like, Oh, that's 42 inches and 25 grand. And now we can run down to Sam's or Costco and get a 90 inch for like 800 bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. Like it's twice as big for a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the investment. Yeah. But the idea that that might be where we're headed is really exciting. And I can't wait to experience wrestling in a new way. So we'll see what happens there. It'd be nice to see the Vols third Saturday in October. Take a, take a slash, oh, slash into your roll tide boys. You know, you made a bet here last week or last year, last season, ahead of that Alabama-Tennessee game, and you said that it's if Tennessee lost, you'd be perfect. decked out in full Alabama garb. We're about out of time, Conrad. I just we are out of time, but I'm just saying we got a month for you to think about that. And in the meantime, I hope that nothing happened and Chris Parks is listening oh. because what I saw over the weekend was old Clipboard Joey go 0-2 out there with his frosted tips looking like Jeremy Borash in 4 Looking like he's ready for the damn in sync reunion. What's he going to do? Step up and replace Justin Timberlake? Hey, bye, 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 bye. There goes the Bengals shot. They suck, Chris got a Parks. Question. Who beats the Bengals? Everybody. Yeah. Man, they're just trash. <laughs> oh, good Lord, Joey. You called it in a loud and clear voice many moons ago, Double J. You're a soothsayer, is what you are. You absolutely <laughs> obliterated Chris Parks and all of his dreams. Damn Bengals, nothing happening. Clipboard Joey. It's an embarrassment, Jeff. You know, Connie, that picture that leaked, and man, what kind of buzz it got talked about the WWE picture, and we talked about it, and just our comments. Uh, I heard there was a, a, a big, huge number on Instagram reels or something. Everybody's talking about that. And you know, our boy Chris Park was a part of that, right? Yeah, he was. Was he holding a clipboard during that picture? I oh, God. Was he? I, 
I mm -hmm. don't want to go out on a limb and I don't like to fabricate stories, but I believe his fandom to clipboard Joey has gone to another level that they're, they're both absolute losers, absolute losers.